Hi, my name is Chris, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Canon EOS R and Unlimited Battery Life, which is especially interesting if you want to do live streaming with the camera, as well as using it as an in-studio camera where you don't want to worry about battery life or the camera dying in some fashion for long-form content like podcasts or interviews. All of those things are going to be covered in this video, so stay tuned for it and I'm going to first talk about why I am using this and why I think you should too. The battery life of the Canon EOS R is quite remarkable. These batteries are not really that big and they're not really that heavy and having two or three of them is probably something of a good idea, especially if you are traveling. But when I am in the studio, I don't really want to worry about the battery dying and I'm sometimes recording for an hour, two, three and with other cameras that was always an issue that I ran into so I immediately searched for a solution and found one. And this is actually something that works with pretty much any camera, so it's not specific to the Canon EOS R, but the way to do it is specific to this one, and this video specifically is talking about the Canon EOS R, of course. Now, interestingly, the camera actually has a USB-C port, and laptops can be charged with USB-C while you're using them, right? So why can't you charge and use the camera? I don't know, but that is actually a limitation of the Canon EOS R, that you can actually charge your batteries with the USB-C port, however you cannot use and record with the camera while charging with USB-C, so that's something that won't work. However, there are different solutions. Of course, there is an official solution and then there are, of course, the knockoff brands on Amazon as well. However, the official version from Canon is actually around 200 euros in Germany and I don't think that it's worth that much, especially if there are other versions out there where you can get the same result around 20 to 40 maybe 50 dollars at most. So what's my solution? For the most part I already had a similar solution for the Sony a7S Mark II when I was using that in the different space here and also on my travels. That solution included a dummy battery that you put into the camera and then you can actually power that with a outlet or with USB. So I was already used to that setup and it's always kind of scary to put some janky little dummy battery into your camera and hope that it's not going to fry anything inside of the camera. But actually I think that that is probably not that much of a concern anymore and most of these adapters will work. However, don't take my word for it if your camera actually becomes a brick. But going over what you will need for this kind of a setup. The first thing that you will need is the actual dummy battery with a cable of some sort. Luckily the camera itself is already equipped with a little kind of flap at the side of the camera so you can actually put a dummy battery in and the camera has a place for the cable coming out of the camera. Specifically this is actually needed because the camera shuts off as soon as you open that door. So you actually have to close the door even though there is a dummy battery in there. Depending on what kind of a setup you're going for, for a wall outlet powered one or a USB-C type one, you might have to do different things here. Sometimes the wall outlet version is actually sold as a package and that may be the easiest route to go. However, I prefer to have a USB-C or a USB-A port powered setup because then I actually can also use a power brick of some sort, maybe the Sendur Super Tank for example, that's something that I'm using. However, to use this with a USB-C power, you actually will need a little bit of an adapter, which is a female to female gender switch adapter for the cable, because the cable actually ends with a 2.1 millimeter jack at the end that is male, and then the cable for the USB is mostly also male, because those are actually made to plug into things. And with this setup, we don't have something that is in between the camera and the outlet, so we are going straight from the outlet into the camera and to do that I actually got a female to female adapter which is basically a gender switch. So the camera comes into that adapter and becomes a female receiver for the cable from the outlet. Of course then we also have the cable for the outlet that you want to have and last but not least some kind of outlet adapter for USB or USB-C depending on what you're doing. I personally use the one from Sendur which is really really powerful. Something to note about these dummy batteries, they're also very useful to actually build your camera into some kind of a cage or system or bigger setup. So you don't have to move the camera out of your system to actually change the batteries but instead you have this dummy battery inside of the system and then you have some kind of a power wall brick that can really be powerful if you do a lot of filmmaking and you have your camera set up in some way and you have a power delivery system on your carry system of some sort for example. 
So now it all looks like this and you can actually just plug the camera in and as long as the power source is powerful enough to power the camera, everything should work just fine. However, there are a couple more things to look out for. Number one is that you want to switch off the power off after a certain amount of time. The other thing is that you also want to put the screen at the maximum and that is 30 minutes. I don't really understand why we can't say never. However, maybe that is also better for the hardware, but it kind of is distracting when you are recording yourself with the power brick version and the screen just turns off after 30 minutes. Now this may not be an issue for someone who is recording internally and it actually is a pretty good telltale whenever you have run over 30 minutes because the camera actually stops recording at 29 something minutes. However, if you're using an external monitor or some setup with a live streaming, for example, with the Elgato game capture or a cam link, then it actually can be quite confusing to see the screen turn black all of a sudden. However, as long as you have your external monitor or your OBS studio open and you can still see yourself, there's nothing going on and it still works. And thirdly, of course, you can not only plug this all into your outlet, but you can also plug it into something like the super tank from Sendur and you can power the whole system with an external bigger battery. And as I've mentioned before, you can also power all of this with NPF style batteries with certain adapter bricks. Now I've been using this setup for as long as I've been using this camera actually because I'm just so annoyed whenever my battery dies within a shoot and that is just so unpredictable sometimes. So I prefer to use a method like this for live streaming, recording and even just inside of the studio to do something like this recording that I'm doing right now. The camera still works, the dummy battery has not done any harm and so I'm really happy for the investment that I've done here to give myself a little bit more of a peace of mind. Now that's all that I have for you today. I hope this was helpful in some kind of way. If you want to check out the gear that I'm using as well as other alternatives, of course many of those links are going to be affiliate links and if you get something through them then that's a great thumbs up from me because that helps me run this channel even though it changes nothing for you with the price. I'm really grateful whenever I see someone using them and I get a little bit of a commission there. That's really helpful. If you have any questions about the setup of course you can leave those in the comments down below and I'm going to answer as many of them as possible. And with all of that said, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.